Here at CNN, new ownership decided to shut down the CNN Plus streaming service less than a month after it was launched by the previous management team. The U-turn was front page news, stunning news, and painful news for everyone involved. Years of development possibly down the drain. Some of the shows may never be seen. Hundreds of staffers may be laid off, though the company is trying to place many of them in new jobs. Amid these bruising headlines, folks are trying to make sense of it, and some partisans are leaping to predictable talking points about politics. But the truth is, this was a corporate move. This CNN Plus service was doomed because of the timing of a merger and clashing streaming strategies. The new owner of CNN, Warner Brothers Discovery, has big plans to combine multiple streaming platforms to make one big challenger for Netflix. And speaking of which, this week, Netflix's first quarter earnings came out. An incredible snag. Subscriber numbers actually declining after the pandemic surge. Its stock taking a nosedive at the news. Lots of questions about Netflix and whether it might actually be a takeover target now. Let's talk about it all, plus Disney and more with our panel of experts here. We have Axios media reporter Sarah Fisher, Mara Schiavacampo, host of the podcast Run Tell This, and a former correspondent at NBC and ABC, and our senior media reporter Oliver Darcy, also with us. Sarah, you, you broke news. First of all, you were a guest on the first episode of my CNN Plus show, so thank you. Then you broke news about the service being doomed. So let's be very transparent about it. What did you learn this month and what led to the closure of CNN Plus? Yeah, well, CNN executives had been plotting this for two years. But then, in 2021, we found out that CNN's parent company, Warner Media, would merge with, AT with uh, Discovery. And what we come to find is that after CNN's head, Jeff Zucker, exited the company, resigned in shock in February, executives at Discovery were starting to question whether or not CNN Plus fit in with their strategy. Discovery, as you mentioned, wanted to create one big streaming service. They wanted it to be general entertainment. CNN Plus is a smaller subscription service. And so I think ultimately they took a look at the books after the merger completed on April 8th. They thought this is too expensive. Hmm. It might not ever get to profit on time. And it doesn't fit in with what we want to do. It's better to cut it off now than to keep it lagging for months while they decide. Hmm. All right, Oliver, you and I work here, so we'll save you. Mara, next to you as an outsider looking at this, what's your perspective on this and what it means for the news business? Well, it's certainly shocking from the outside looking in because of the fanfare that preceded this launch. You know, right. we're talking about estimated $300 million that were spent, huge marketing and promotion, big names that were brought in, Chris Wallace, Audie Cornish, uh, Eva Longoria. And so it was shocking that this happened so abruptly. But at the end of the day, this is a business decision. And, you know, there are debates Debates about whether or not journalism should be treated as a business versus a public service, but it is a business for better or for worse. And so to your point, as a new owner, do you come in, see something that's not working and continue to throw good money after bad? And it appears that they made the decision not to continue doing that, that they did not think this was in the best long term interest for the company. But mm -hmm. again, from the outside looking in, I am very curious to see what they're going to do with all of this talent. I mean, these are huge names mm -hmm. with huge followings. Where are they going to go? I had a source say to me this week, everyone's a product of their history and the new management team at Discovery, their history includes some niche streaming services that did not do well, right, Sarah? They launched streaming services they were kind of like CNN Plus, although they're not the same, and they failed. And so Discovery does not believe in that model. And it's, it's hard to fathom as a, a CNN employee, worried about my colleagues being laid off, that this was simply about, you know, corporate strategy. But yeah. that's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was. And there's also a differing view on whether or not it was successful. People inside CNN... But wasn't you know, it too soon to know? Well, that's the argument, right? Because this is sort of unprecedented, we've never really had a subscription news and video app. People wanted to see what mm. the precedent this would set. We're never going to really find out. Right. We know that in the two and a half weeks since launch, it got about 150,000 subscribers, paid subscribers. Now, some people in the news business have been saying to me, hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. But the challenge is the money they spent to get those paid subscribers. You're mm. talking $300 million of investment to date. The plan was to spend a billion dollars over the next four years with the hope of getting to profitability after four years. The question, Brian, becomes if people are paying, you know, $5.99 or $2.99 for that, you know, lifetime membership, is it ultimately going to be worth the spend? Right. And that was the challenge. I think Discovery took a look at this and they said, we don't think it's ultimately going to be worth the spend, mm. even though that's a good number of subscribers for now. Right. It might not be a good business. So they say they will focus on the core business, this channel as well as CNN Digital. Oliver, what's next for CNN? 
for CNN as a channel. I mean, Chris Licht is coming in. He's a new president of CNN. And there's a lot of things on his plate, right? He has a new 9 p.m. host he has to appoint. Uh, he has to figure out what to do with the talent that was brought in for CNN Plus. And also, there are hundreds of employees who potentially could be laid off. And so he's going to try to find, you know, in the town hall, he was talking about trying to absorb some of those people into the organization. Right. And so he's he's got work to do if he's going to, uh, you know, he's got hundreds of people, so he's got work to do if he's going to try to find them other places inside CNN. Now, is this story, Sarah, related to the Netflix story? Because uh, it's a coincidence that CNN Plus was shut down on the same week that Netflix had that horrible earnings report. But is there a similarity in the story about the streaming competition? Yes, definitely. During the pandemic, there was a huge boon in subscription streaming. People were willing to put their money out. But what we found is that that market might actually not be as big as we once thought it was. Mm. We might have hit a point of saturation. Over and over, analysts have found that consumers are willing to spend around $40 a month on subscription services. But that hasn't increased. That's even why your the headline supply. here says this is a sea change for streaming. It is. It is. Because even though the supply has increased, the demand has not. Budgets have not increased. And we're now at a point of inflation. Consumers are starting to be more wary. As a result, we're seeing an introduction and a rise of ad-supported streaming services. That's the exact opposite of what CNN Plus was. CNN Plus didn't have ads. Right, no ads, right. It was right. just subscriptions. Netflix, after many years of saying, we don't want to put ads on our service, has finally come out this week and said, look, if we want to expand the number of subscribers, we have to include an ad-supported tier. And by the way, that's what everyone has done. Disney right. Plus is now doing it. You know, obviously Discovery, HBO Max, you name it. They're all putting ads on the service. That's the big change here. It's no longer going to be ad-free subscription everything because people just don't have enough money to pay for that.